Hello, ActiveSage here on the Sage channel, and today, as per usual, on a Thursday, Space Engineers has updated. Now, you can see I am in a terrifyingly messy room with a huge amount of doors around. You can probably guess what's about to happen. Yes, indeed, they have finally added a depressurization effect to actually pull stuff. So, instead of just having that really damn cool effect, now it actually yanks and pushes and pulls stuff. So, if I was to go ahead and press this button right here, you can instantly see that everything in this room gets tossed about. Now, my screen is blinking red because I have my helmet off. That's a big no-no, isn't it? I should run to that panel there, shouldn't I? Well, no. I can just press J as in Joseph, Jimmy, Jennifer, Janet, Jason, or Jordan, if you like. And it'll put your helmet on you instantly. So you now have to press that to take it on and off. And of course, it'll spurge your character out a little bit as it's swapping between models. Who knows if that'll get fixed in the future. Either way, though, it works. That's the most important thing. And it's not really much of a terribly, terribly bad spurge. And, of course, if I was to keep my helmet off and close these doors, as per usual, once the doors close and the room repressurizes, I'll be absolutely fine. Things to keep in... Oh, hello. Come on, doors. Close a little bit quicker now. Close a little bit quicker. Okay, now pressurize, pressurize. There we go. Pressurize. So, remember, things to keep in mind. Bottom right down there. It says oxygen is high. Over there on the bottom left, it says standing. That's my current position because I can be crouching, standing, crouching, standing. But it also says helmet off. Do keep in mind your helmet's off. So if you're in your first person and you can't tell, that's a little thing there. I do hope in the future some of this stuff will be replaced with icons. That way it'll be multi-language friendly and a bit more aesthetically pleasing. But right now it's fantastic to have that little there and just keep that in mind if you ever forget. Also to note, if you have your helmet on, as I've just put it on and you see the message in the middle of the screen there, you will be able to die inside your suit just as before if you run out of oxygen in your suit. So if the oxygen right down there goes to zip and you're standing inside an oxygenated room, you will die. Just press J, take off your helmet, and you'll be able to survive in that room even though your suit will not refill on oxygen. A bit strange, I find that, that your suit doesn't naturally pull oxygen into it when you have your helmet off. I would expect that, but I'm thinking if it's not intended, or if this is intended to work like this, it's because the devs actually want you to use stations like this to go up and click on that to re-get the, actually use pressurized air is what I'm trying to say. Use pressurized air and inject it in your suit or have those big gas canisters. Unfortunately, right now, that's the only way, though. I do kind of hope they change their mind on that, though, and we do just, you know, we can't just walk around an oxygenated room and your suit will pull in oxygen slowly and pressurize it into the suit. Anyway, moving on from there, we do have... As I showed the depressurization stuff here, I'm going to show that a little bit more and go into it a tiny bit more. I'm actually going to do an F9 here, so I'm in spectator mode where I can still control my character. Aim him at the button and do an F8 again to have control of my camera again. And we're going to go ahead and press T, that way I can show you this depressurization effect. It's pretty damn cool, the second the doors start opening, it pulls everything within about a block radius towards the door. Now, of course, currently, the doors open so slowly, it instantly pinches at the bottom. This isn't a bug, this isn't an issue, this is actually absolutely fine, and it's pretty damn cool that the second the doors start opening, it starts pulling stuff. Now, mind you, I can do something else to show this, but first, what I'm going to go ahead and do is reload this map in creative, that way I can show you things more easily. Oh, and before I do that, I should also show one last thing. The reason why this is actually here is because if you have a modded suit such as any of my suits and you go ahead and have that on and you're like oh dear my oxygen's low let me take off my helmet unfortunately right now pressing j cannot remove helmet on this suit because what it's actually doing when you remove the helmet is as you might have guessed swapping between two separate models two swap separate character models just as it did before when you used to switch between these and by the way switching between those no longer restores your oxygen the full so you can no longer cheat in that manner which is pretty damn cool that they fixed that so just keep that in mind i will hopefully get character a secondary model and figure out how to set that all up within the next few weeks no promises but i'm looking into it and I'll hopefully get that going. That way we can actually take off our helmets in our survival series. And if you have some of my publicly released character models, you'll be able to do the same on those. I also do hope that the characters will have some modding capabilities. So if you have a robot character, you can set it so he doesn't use oxygen, but maybe uses more energy. Maybe. I don't know if I can set that up yet. If I can, that's awesome. If I can't, maybe someday. Huh? Wink. Anyway, moving on from that, I'm going to reload this world in creative. That way we can do a few other little cool things. Eh? 
Alrighty, world has been reloaded in creative. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the camera right here. So you can see that's about the range of, as I showed earlier, it pulls from about a block away. It's pretty damn cool how it tosses stuff about because, of course, it hits it at such a speed and ends up tossing it about. I can also go ahead and sit my camera outside and you'll see that it pulls them all the way through the door sometimes. There we go. A bunch of stuff got just got flung out over there. A few other little things slowly rolled. Uh, are you going to roll all the way off? No, you are. are uh, away he goes. Now, if we had left him there, actually, he would have gotten tossed off the edge as well. Because it doesn't just do a pulling effect from the inside of an area that's depressurizing. It actually pushes anything on the other side as well. Plop. I love how some of this stuff gets squished and sometimes thrust out. But what I'm going to do now to demonstrate said effect is I'm going to grab one of these little crates that I have floating around in here, and these crates are just full of nonsensical stuff, and I don't have copy-paste on because it didn't turn back on by default when I went ahead and reloaded this world into creative. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. And there we go, it's reloaded into creative. Let's go. Where do those crates go? Did I have a crate up here? Where did it go? I know they were floating around. I guess maybe the only way to find them is to depressurize the room and then pressurize it again. And maybe I'll nudge them out to a spot where I can actually see them. No. Yes, there's one right there. So what I'm going to do is grab that. It's just full of random stuff. Paste it right out here and delete it so all this stuff gets tossed right there on the surface. And now when we open doors, you can see that the air that comes flushing out of there also pushes stuff on the outside. Now, this does also affect your character, and the best way to demonstrate how it affects your character is for me to actually go over there and stand right next to it. Before I do that, i just like to point out that it only seems to pull from about a single block's width away from whatever is being depressurized. Blimey, turn that back on. So there we go. I just wanted to point that out. As you can see, this stuff over here doesn't seem to budge at all. Oh, I didn't let the room pressurize fully first, or even slightly first. So there we go. I've given it more than enough time to fully pressurize. Now that we open it, again, it seems to barely tug on anything that's too farther away. So to demonstrate that it does pull characters, though, I'm going to sit my character right here next to this door, pop back into spectator, line up on whichever door that is. Oh, is this one? Yes. Okay. And we're going to remove this door, and you'll see that... Sure enough, my character just got pulled out of the door. And I'm going to delete that and seal it up again. It's pretty damn cool. And of course, if I was standing on the other side of the door, such as right here, as we just showed with those blocks, you'll get pushed along and away. So, whoop, and it pushed me away again. Pretty damn cool, that. And of course, it seems like it pushed me more upwards this time, interestingly enough. Uh, there we go. Seal that off again. There's one or two other things I have to show with this update really quickly. I just want to seal this door. I think it's because there's a block blocking it from something. There we go. So that should get rid of the whatever's blocking it. There we go. I just like to show off this because this is kind of cool to do that and see it pull everything in an area at once. Unfortunately, we seem to have removed an awful lot of stuff, so there's not too much to throw up. But what I can do, just to give you guys something real cool to look at real quickly, this is a side that's in light. Let's just put a couple hundred of these in real quickly and then remove them, and then you can see all the stuff fall out, shall we? And there we go. That should be more than enough stuff to have a bit of an interesting show. Should it not, as I depressurize this area? Sh should we put a little bit more? Maybe just a little bit more? It seems like stuff is disappearing from elsewhere. Must be reaching the thousand item limit. A little bit more, eh? There we are. That's a little bit more. And I guess I was wrong about, well, maybe, I don't know. It seems like it is getting more sparse. Anyway, let's go ahead and see now what happens if I was to depressurize this wall right here with all of this nonsense simply by going ahead and removing this door at the same time. <laughs> yep, I think that was worth the setup. Uh, and of course, as this stuff gets farther away, it goes out of our viewing range and disappears. Pretty damn cool. Uh, anyways, that's the basics of all this stuff getting tossed about. Let's go ahead and just do one more test really, really quickly, shall we? Of me removing that. Can I put a block? No, it's not going to let us do that. So we're going to have to do one of these really, really quick. Really quick now. There we go, seal that off, and just to ensure that it is actually only pulling from about a block away from the area that is depressurized. Eh, yeah, about only a block away. Now before I move on to the very last thing to show, I have another something to show here inside of Reset the World really quickly. And what I'm going to be showing you guys is this here. You'll notice I have all these doors in the structure, right? I've been showing you them the whole time. Well, would you look at that? I only have a doors group. Where are all the doors? Well, if you look right here at the top, there's this little show hidden blocks button. Well, basically, you can now hide stuff in here. So what I have is the doors group. I can access them all from here. But if I actually click that little button at the top there I was talking about, 
you can now see all these hangar doors are actually showing up. They're grayed out, but I can still access them, so I can open and close them and all the normal stuff I would do, but whenever I click this button, it hides them. And you don't have to have something in a group. Let's say I want to just hide this gravity generator. Well, all you gotta do is right here, there's this little button, show block on terminal, off. And now it's hidden, and I can't access it anymore unless I go ahead, click that button, and now, of course, I could go ahead and try to find that gravity generator. So that's just another way to sort and clean up these screens here. That way you're not just having this huge mess of a thousand and one items, which could be very, very annoying. Okay, one last thing to show, guys, and that is scenarios that they've added in. So, all right, to show that, I'm going to exit that world. I'm going to do new world. And the scenario button right there. That's not like when you do custom world layout scenario at the top left here in this whole column. Nope, that is something new. It's actually a scenario thing. And this is a scenario world they made ages and ages ago to show some scripting nonsense. And you go ahead and click on it, they select it. You can name it whatever you like, you know, like hi. Um, and you can enter in your description just like a normal world, but what you cannot do is edit any of its settings because this is basically a predefined world. And you can go ahead and click OK on that. It'll load it up. There we go. And it's loaded it in. And you can see, oh, nice window. Oh, oh so we're suddenly on a ship. Huh, fancy that. That's pretty cool. Huh. Oh, what's this? <gasps> ship hit by... Ship hit by asteroid. Large thruster destroyed. Which means that... Fix the ship by placing small thrusters. And you don't really need to do this. And by the way, this area isn't pressurized. If I turn on my HUD, you can see that helmet's on. I can take it off. Not really any difference. No oxygen stuff showing up. The oxygen's turned off in this world. Find help in the area. Make sure you turn off turrets when approaching unknown structures you want to explore. Please note, you want to keep those bloody turrets on. Because there's tons of evil stuff in this world. You're only going to turn them off once you get really, really close to stuff. And you see the idea is that an asteroid is hit here and destroyed your large thruster and damaged your ship. You got your true turrets on either side for defense. And your one missile at the front. They're going to be adding more of these scenario missions in the future. Now, please note, this is a surprisingly difficult battle, I find, what's coming up here. So, we're going to hop in this. We're going to start accelerating forward. And you see that the way these messages are being relayed to you also, if I was to actually go ahead and hop out here, is basically from this computer core. It seems like its messages change. They have some scripting stuff in this world that's doing it. It's slightly above my usual understanding. But any second here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on all the turrets at the bottom there. That I believe that turns them on so they target large ships and stations and all that. I believe that's what all these buttons are set up to do. But you also have your missile launcher at the front, and any second here, we are going to end up in a spot of bother, I believe. There we go, inertial dampeners on. Actually, seems like we accelerate faster with them on. But any second now, we are going to get attacked as we fly towards Satellite 1. So there we go, enemy detected, guard drones activated. And, of course, I'm going to maneuver because I found that instantly my cockpit got took out the very first time I was here. But I am also going to try to take them out with a missile. Unfortunately, you have ten of them. And if you're a rubbish shot as I am, you could end up in some serious trouble. Now, luckily, my turrets for once seem to have actually taken that out. You follow these satellites, and it leads you to a station, which leads you, you know, has some materials on it. You can build more stuff. In fact, it says, reach the station, gain large thruster blueprint from computer inside. Bit strange that, eh? We can even fly past this little satellite here, which doesn't actually do anything. So ideally, you turn off your turrets to keep it from wasting ammo. It's all pretty cool that they have all this set up. Oh, actually, turn off... There we go, we want to keep moving so I can walk about. I believe the idea here is if we go to production and we go ahead and try to build a large thruster, it's right there. So strange that it says to go find a blueprint. I think that's their idea that maybe the blueprints will be elsewhere eventually or maybe they'll code in a way that you cannot actually place it. Because currently I can just go through here, type in thrust and oh! I was wrong, pardon me. So you cannot actually put in a large thruster currently. Oh dear God, I'm being shot at. I turn on all of our turrets again. Uh, oh dear, oh dearie, dearie, dearie. That's bad, my window's gone. It's very bad. So yeah, the idea is you have rocket launcher three is not working. So yeah, it's very difficult. I've, I've tried a few times. I'm very, very bad at it. I get the feeling the way I would actually do it is slightly less direct. Um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Go ahead and try that yourselves, guys. You'll probably have a lot more success than I have had with it. You could, of course, respawn in here. Uh, please note, though, if... Oh, I keep turning off my jetpack and then dying because the ship's moving, strangely enough. Um, 
Please note though, if you do decide that, hey, I just like to explore this world in creative, do not just exit without saving, thinking it'll be completely as it was. You have to actually save when you exit, or else, or at least save and then exit, or else it's not going to show up in your world. So you can see there, Space Station's Mission 01. That actually looks like it didn't save properly. Let's go ahead and see. Is this going to be my ship drifting and getting shot at with me stuck inside it? Yes, it is. So it didn't keep our name, but it did save the world right there. And of course, I could have now changed the settings before I loaded up to be creative. Anyway, guys, that's it for this update. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was informative and somewhat entertaining to watch. And I shall see you guys next time. Ta-ta. Be silent, turret. Oh, thank you. Oh, god dang it.